If you're a woodworker, did you know that you'll lose approximately 1% of your respiratory capacity every year of woodworking? And over the course of our lifetimes, we'll probably live 10 years shorter than the average person. My name's Andrew, I'm a young woodworker, and I'm trying to prevent this from happening for myself. So in this particular video, we'll be looking at various tools and the dust that's created by them. We'll be measuring the air quality with a Dylos air monitor. The monitor was effectively placed near where I'd be standing in each of the experiments. And this was done, of course, to show the approximate number of particulates I'd effectively be breathing in if I weren't wearing a mask. I had a camera rolling on me at all times, along with a GoPro monitoring the monitor. So with that in mind, we captured all the results, and then the graphs are effectively based on what the monitor was seeing throughout each of these experiments. Furthermore, here's the legend that indicates the air quality. It was created by the folks at Dylos, but it's roughly based off of the EPA standards. A good air quality is about 300 particulates or less. A fair assessment is about 1,050 particulates or less. And anything above 3,000 particulates is in the very poor range. So we're gonna go ahead and start now on the lathe. We're gonna start here because we saw the starkest differences right here on the lathe between having dust collection and no dust collection. And we did that by turning these. Two candle holders here. So in the first one, we didn't have dust collection, while in the second one, we had a pretty precarious setup of a one horsepower dust collector with a rigid hose port that we'd used. And in looking in the graph, even though it was a pretty precarious setup, we saw that there was quite a huge difference in using a dust collector and not using a dust collector. So between the two, we definitely see a peak when we're using the dust collection at first, and that's because I went pretty hard in turning the second candle holder there. Potentially it was due to the bag as well, but you know, shortly thereafter, we definitely see things coming down during the 18 minutes that these both took to turn. The metric, however, that was most important was that for the 0.5 micron particulates, we saw that on average, it was roughly over 4,000 particulates less when using dust collector. When using the dust collector, we saw that things went from good and fair to very poor, which was kind of expected, and then it came right back down to the fair by the end of the experiment. While without dust collection, we're really seeing that we're sitting in that very poor range throughout the entirety of the experiment, really. So yeah, dust collection is definitely super important, and we found that with a lathe. Moving to the bandsaw now. So here at the bandsaw, we had some pretty telling results. We compared a one horsepower bagged dust collector the same one from the lathe. And we also use a two horsepower cyclone dust collector with the canister on top. And in this experiment, we cut up 10 used noses and tails from skateboards that we glued up and used for various things. The cutting took about four minutes or so, and here's how the graphs looked effectively. So looking at the graph, we see that there's a clear winner with a two horsepower canister during the cutting period, and also 2.5 minutes or so after the cutting, where the air quality is consistently lower. After that particular period, and well after the cutting is done, we notice that the air quality of the one horsepower gets better. And frankly, that's because I'm a bit of a Charlie Brown. And unfortunately, the air filter that I used throughout all these experiments, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that there's an air filter used through all these experiments. Uh, it's a Powermatic unit. It was set to medium during the two horsepower experiment, and it was set to high for the one horsepower experiment, which is the reason for the differences there. So barring that, during the cutting, the two horsepower with slightly lower air filtration allowed on average over the four minutes, 139 less particles into the air. However, the peaks in both experiments were 719 for the one horsepower and 549 for the two horsepower, which meant that in general, according to the legend, the air quality overall stayed in the fair range and never went beyond that. So something also to note is that with the bag dust collector, we noticed that at this start, it was almost 300 particulates higher than that of using the canister. That's also the same case when I did the same experiment on the table saw as well. So, you know, it's kind of similar to an ax commercial when you turn this dust collector on. Uh, instead of, you know, gorgeous people flocking to whomever's spraying some ax spray around, it's kind of similar to that, but it's more like the Grim Reapers kind of coming after you uh, with all the dust particulates in the air. So for the table saw, we did a similar analysis with the one horsepower and the two horsepower dust collectors as well. We cut some three quarter inch plywood, three cuts of that, and we also cut some four quarter birch. And uh, yeah, the cuts took about 10 minutes or so, and we analyzed the air quality for about 20 minutes. And so here are the results that we kind of saw. So I could tell you that 78% of the time, the particulates were less with a two horsepower system than it was with the one horsepower system. Honestly, there wasn't a huge difference. And I really want to say that with the table saw itself, I need to do a better job. It's like a mini explosion happens every time you pass the wood through, right? And it's all happening sort of on top of where the dust collection system is, which is really underneath and below the machine. So I think, you know, things like an overarm dust collector or some blade guards also have 
uh, a dust port in the back. I've seen the Wood Whisperer of late start using it as well. And so in general, I think I can do a better job at dust collecting on this particular unit. That said, when you look at the results again, we go from a good slash fair assessment to very poor and then come right back down to the fair with the air filtration and the dust collection again. I'm not doing a super terrible job, but I just think I can certainly do a better job with some overarm dust collection here. So yeah, um, those are the, sort of the results from the table saw. So additionally, I actually have a few other tests that I did, just kind of for fun. One of them included analyzing these, these Festool palm sanders. I have the ETS EC125 and one of their fancy dust extractors. I basically wanted to see, are they the 99% efficient as they claim to be? So, you know, taking a look at sanding some paddles that I made for about 10 to 11 minutes or so, we see that we have a fairly flat profile and frankly, the air quality was very stable and it stayed at the good range. So that was kind of awesome and reassuring in the sense that, you know, these palm sanders do seem to do a really good job and you know I'll continue probably to wear a respirator around them but you borderline don't need to. Furthermore another test that I did was looking at my upstairs air quality uh, you know for all you basement woodworkers are you adversely affecting you know your family's health are you ad adversely affecting your own health. So I have a bit of an open stairwell situation happening in this home so there's a possibility of air kind of seeping up to my second floor there. So on a day where I had a lot of table sawing to do I set up the Dylos monitor upstairs and over the course of about 15 to 20 minutes in which I cut, the air quality sat in the fair range and it jumped up about maybe 250 particulates. So generally speaking, it didn't hugely affect the air quality upstairs in a negative way or anything, which again, was kind of reassuring for me. And then furthermore, there's a lot of great videos out there now on this topic. You know, you have Jonathan Katz Moses, you have Lincoln Street Woodwork who have some really neat videos on air quality. And I just kind of want to throw another one into the ring in which I'm empirically taking a look at the results and kind of have some numbers that I can actually throw to people uh, with regards to air quality on fairly common and woodworking tools. For me, I'm pretty stoked because it really gives me a sense of what's actually happening in my shop. And there's certainly things for me to improve on. I hope this gives you insights into what air quality might look like maybe even in your own shop and stuff. And if there's anything you feel like I'm missing or anything you think I should take a look at, feel free to drop a comment below and stuff as well. So yeah, from my shop to yours, thank you so much for checking this out and I uh, hope everyone stays safe out there. All the best and happy making and stuff. So all the best, peace.